gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, uh, we're going to do a Joan Rivers. Can we talk? Joan Rivers and also Tib and Campbell. Can we talk for a minute? And can we talk? Ladies and gentlemen, got some things that um, have been on my mind lately, and I just wanted to share those mental thoughts with you all. And they're not about the system. Well, yes, they are, but they're not. Yes, they are, but they're not. But yes, they are, but they're not. But yes, they are, you know, but they're not. But they are, but they're not. You know what I mean? Oh, you don't know what I mean. Well, see, that's exactly what I mean. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I saw a show today, and I also just finished watching another movie uh, this past weekend, and they both dealt with racism. You know what the problem is? Because I've seen this problem all my life, especially because I talk like this. You know, you, most of you, if I had not told you that I was a person of color, you would be second-guessing because you would not have seen a picture. Ladies and gentlemen, don't tell me you wouldn't be because there are too many other people who have already told me that. You should have seen the look. Man, I talk to these courts on the phone. I even talk to judges on the phone about particular cases before I go in. Then I show up in court, and you should see that long stare from the bench. That's what I used to go through. I don't go through that anymore because now they pretty much know who the I am. However, I've been watching these shows um and I don't watch them that often because they do stir up emotions, and that's what they're designed for. Ladies and gentlemen, they don't produce these shows about racism and apartheid and uh, slavery and Jim Crow. They don't produce these shows just to be producing them because they want box office ratings. Please, they don't sell that much. No, they produce these shows because they are garnering a response. That's what they want. They want to elicit that response. They want you to talk about it. Because if you talk about it, you bring more attention to whatever industry it is that you're associating that movie, that show, that program with. Well, that's why I'm not mentioning the program. <laughs> but what I am going to mention is there is a problem in this country. There is a problem in this world. People of color are not only stigmatized in the United States, but they're stigmatized around the entire globe. If you don't believe me, go and take a look. Look at the history of how they've treated people of color, even in Africa. Look at South Africa. Go up to Libya and go up to all the other northern countries in Africa. You, you just heard me say northern countries in Africa. Yes, because Africa is not a country. Africa is a continent. Zimbabwe, Libya, even Egypt. All of those places are countries of Africa, but they're, they are not Africa itself. Well, in watching these shows, uh, one show in particular, a group of individuals had gone into a restaurant, and they were eating, and the police came in. There's even a Twilight Zone. I don't mention the Twilight Zone because Twilight Zone definitely had me shook. The Twilight Zone episode is a mother and her son going into a restaurant. And I do believe it was the same character who's playing the starring role in the movie I'm watching. I believe he played the son in that Star Trek that came out, I think, about 2015 or so. Maybe even, it may have been all the way back to 2012. But either way, that particular Star Trek was the mother and the son. I think it's about Star Trek, the fifth episode of the 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 Star Trek that came out a couple of years ago. And they go into a restaurant, and as they're eating, this police officer comes in, and they're just getting ready to leave, and the police officer gets up and strikes up a conversation with the mother. And then he asks her, is that your blah, blah, blah car parked out there? And she goes, yes, it is. I need to see a license and registration. Now, he's not even out at the car. He's in a restaurant. And he keeps causing them a lot of problems. And what happens is, it's a Groundhog Day episode because every single time the mother is trying to figure out how to get out of that situation peacefully without there being an issue, her son gets shot. 
the officer literally takes out his gun and shoots their son. Every single time she tries to get out of that situation, the officer shoots her son. Interesting. And doesn't matter what she does until at the very end she gets some help. She elicits some help from her brother. All right, that's that episode. Then you have the episode of the show that I saw today, which are about four episodes of this show, because this show, this is not the main focus of the show, but it's kind of hard for them not to focus on it because of the way the characters are being portrayed. And so the individuals are in the restaurant and the police come in. And no matter what they did, the police kept escalating the conversation. You would think they would know better, but no, they don't know better because there is this thing called crisis intervention. Anybody ever heard of crisis intervention? Well, it's a de-escalation program where you learn how to de-escalate crisis. Individuals are upset. You learn how to lower the tension. Ladies and gentlemen, I had uh, there was a young man that I knew when I was growing up, and this young man, Dag Nevitt, and uh, I'm trying to think of his name right now, and I can't think of it, and that's Nehemiah. And Nehemiah, every time somebody would argue, he would step in and go, hey, how about those Dodgers? Oh, and you, did you see what the Yankees did yesterday? Literally, just walk up and he'll just say that. And next thing you know, no more arguing. And I pulled him to the side and I said, who taught you that? And he said, it was just, it's just something I do. And I've always had a great deal of respect for that young man. Never saw him again after that year, but, you know, nonetheless, a lot of respect. Why? Because he hated arguing the same as I did, almost to the same degree. And his was to change the subject. I mean, who could argue with, hey, what about the Lakers? Did you hear? Did you see what the Lakers did yesterday? Ladies and gentlemen, that question doesn't matter what the Lakers did. You're going to respond. Whether I don't care about no stupid Lakers. Man, why would you not care about the Lakers? You hate the Lakers or something? Literally, it just changes the subject. Now the subject gets to be focused on something else. It actually works. Now, it doesn't work with me. Because the moment I see it happening, I bring you right back to the conversation. I told you, all the witnesses have this publication called Reasoning from the Scriptures, and it has a topic of conversation. And it teaches us how to bring people back to the subject or the topic of conversation. Now, with that being said, they did a George Floyd episode where they portrayed George Floyd having died in the protests and so forth. Ladies and gentlemen, I said back then to everybody who was around me, I said this whole George Floyd thing, watch and see how quickly it will fade away. Look at Breonna Taylor. We know the name. Breonna Taylor. Look at what they did to that woman, but they give her her family a couple of million dollars, and it's all over what's said and done. Man, please, you, you want to offer my family some money? Well, you're going to name a park after her. And a rec center. You better believe it. And you're going to provide daycare and after school programs for children. Oh, yeah. Why? Because you're going to remember her name. No, it's going to cost you a lot more than some 12 blah, 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 blah million dollars. George Floyd, same thing. You're going to name a building after him. And you're going to create a contract with us that that building shall remain named after him for the next 50 years. And if you want to rebuild on the site, you can only do so with our permission. Just that simple. Just that simple. That's, but nobody does that, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, police officers get freeways, poor sections of freeways named after them. But when they kill somebody, these people don't get nothing named after them. You have those individuals with Black Lives Matter, and I understand Black Lives Matter. I When they did that Black Lives Matter painting in the middle of the street, I, look, hey, let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. I thought that that was a picture. 
You know, I didn't think it was real. I thought that somebody had Photoshopped that into the street because that thing looked perfect. And what did they come do? They came and sprayed it down. Why? Because there was a bureaucrat saying, we need to do something about this. The unrest is about to step out into the mainstream. Ladies and gentlemen, the B1.1.529, the new Omicron, Omicron, the Omicron variant is going to be exactly that, designed to cause civil unrest. See, they already know. Pay attention, because you guys didn't pay attention to this. They already know how many of you are going to cause problems. Ladies and gentlemen, that is somebody from SACOM. That is somebody from SACOM. And I just, right now, I am trying to wind down. It has been a long week for me. And I really am exhausted if you can't hear it in my voice. Ooh, doggy, I don't know what I'm doing. But, yes, I am exhausted. It is. Today, the temperature right now is 76 degrees. Two days ago, it would have been about 66 degrees about this time. So the temperature has increased about 10 degrees. Barometric pressure is changing, which means I go through these spells. That's the word for it, of low energy. Doesn't matter. I don't need to go take no sugar. I don't need to go take no uppers or downers. I don't need any of that stuff, so don't offer it to me. Don't suggest it. Whew. And those of you who ignore me, from this point on, if I tell you, I don't care who you be. I don't care who you are. I don't care whether you heard this video or not. From this point forward, anybody want to offer some suggestion as to, quote, unquote, my health, I will delete you, I will block all of your emails, and you will not be allowed to communicate with me or any organization that I operate. This is the only time I'm going to bring these videos over to the organization. I will not tolerate that any longer. It will not be tolerated. I, I don't care if people don't appreciate it. This is me telling you how much I appreciate it. What's happening right now is a lot of people are being told what they can and cannot do respecting my person, and they're ignoring that, and then they're making excuses as to why they're ignoring it. So the best way for me to handle stupidity is to handle stupidity. Okay, people want to ignore me. It's my turn. Okay, my turn to ignore them. That's what I'm getting ready to do to the fullest extent. Because they don't deserve, they do not deserve, let me say it again, they don't deserve any type of association with my person. Well, anyway, let's get back to the George Floyd thing. We'll leave the other subjects alone. I told everybody that the George Floyd thing was going to go away, that people are going to even forget about him. Sure enough, same thing with Breonna Taylor. Anybody remember? Sure enough. Look at how many other people got shot and their names was. Look at Trayvon Martin, ladies and gentlemen. They made that kid to look like he was the Tilla the Hun. Yet a grown man said that he was threatened by him. Trayvon didn't pull out any weapon, didn't pull out any gun, but this man shot and killed him and got off. Got off. Let me explain why that is, ladies and gentlemen, because... The reason why they speak about a jury being all white or a jury being all black, what's happening is that is a legitimate complaint. Why? It isn't because of just simple culture. The jury being all white, they have not had the same experiences as the person whom they are supposedly representing. They are not peers of that individual. And that's what people have to stop fooling themselves into thinking that just because somebody's your age and they live in the same country, you guys are not peers. You were never peers. You were not supposed to be peers. Sorry. It's just the way it is. O.J. Simpson. 
Yeah, that causes a whole lot of controversy. You mentioned that young man's name. O.J. Simpson. They said he killed his wife, his ex-wife, in a fit of rage because she was dating somebody else. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, they had been divorced for some time. O.J. Simpson knew she was dating. He was going and seeing his kids. Yes, he knew she was dating. So if he's in a fit of rage that night, you're going to have to explain why. He's in a fit of rage the very same night he has to leave town? Oh, no, he planned all of that. Well, he planned it. No, that's interesting. Well, then if he planned it, then he's not in a fit of rage. Hold on. You guys do understand that. You understand the logic. If he planned it, then he's not in a fit of rage. But if he's in a fit of rage, it's not a plan. It's just reaction. Just hacking somebody with a knife and then taking off. Ladies and gentlemen, he would not have been able to clean the blood up off of himself or out of his vehicle. It, I, 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 they said he was wearing gloves. Well, if he was wearing gloves, then why does he have a cut on his hand? Well, because the gloves fell off. No, the gloves fell off at the house, remember, people? Pay attention. There were no cuts in the gloves. Pay attention. There were no cuts in the glove, but he has a cut on his hand. Where'd the cut come from? Well, he probably had that cut from someplace else. That's right. Speculation. But according to the police, he got cut during the altercation. But if he got cut during the altercation, wasn't he wearing gloves? So why isn't the cut in the glove? Well, he took it off. Really, he took the glove off? And then here's the thing. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you all to pay attention. He drives home with the glove on him? Then how come there isn't blood all over the vehicle? Well, he's got the steering wheel. Did he take the gloves off to grab the steering wheel? Then how come there isn't blood on the steering wheel? Now, I, 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 I stop. It's too late for those of you who thought this man was guilty to understand the evidence. The jury understood the evidence because this is what was being said. I know a lot of people thought that the forensic stuff, the scientists and everything was boring. This is what they were talking about, people. Remember, they took his blood at the scene, literally. Sorry, I apologize. They took his blood at the station and drove it all the way back to the scene. Ladies and gentlemen, why did they draw his blood at the station and then drive it all the way back to the scene? There is not a single excuse that anybody or their grandmother could give me for that. Because that's a violation of every single protocol and of the chain of custody of evidence. There is no procedure for taking the blood of someone at a police station and then driving that blood, nothing else, just the blood, all the way back to the scene, which is a 20-minute drive from Parker Center. Why? Why? And that's when there's no traffic. Why, 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 why? But he's guilty. He's guilty for what reason? Because the news said it? Of course. Because the news and People Magazine and all them doctored this picture to make him look darker? <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> you guys, uh, somebody put up a picture that's supposed to be of me where that thing is so doctored, it's pathetic. That is nowhere, nowhere looking like me, but of course, to them, <laughs> I got to look like I'm homeless because that's what they wanted everybody to think. <sighs> so while watching that, uh, by the way, O.J. Simpson, Again, I need you guys to understand something. This is where the police messed up. Their theory was he parked the car, his truck, the Bronco, which made Bronco sales go through the roof. But he parked the Bronco, and I personally, I don't like the Bronco 1. I like the Bronco 2. The Bronco 2 was the, one of the first style SUVs out there. And when I was, my friend, his name was uh, Victor, and Victor B., Victor had a Bronco, too, he and his wife, Michelle. And Victor would, he's a Jehovah's Witness, and he would take us around in his Bronco, too. I thought that that was the smoothest ride for a truck I'd ever been in, and I always wanted a Bronco, too. Never had one, but always wanted one. Ladies and gentlemen, they say that 
O.J. Simpson parked that Bronco at an obscure angle more than 18 inches away from the curb. Pay attention. He did that because the limousine driver was parked in the middle of the driveway. And so because he couldn't go up the front of the driveway because the limousine driver was parked there, he parked outside and he went around to the back of the house, climbed over the gate, dropped the glove, and went into the house. Now, wait, hold on. He left one glove at the scene. Now, he left the glove at the scene. Remember, his hand is cut. But there's no blood on the steering wheel. One drop of blood on the door and then drops of blood going all the way up the middle of the driveway, which O.J. Simpson, according to the police, never went up the middle of the driveway because the limousine was there. No, he went around the back of the gate, jumped over the gate, dropped the glove, bumped into the air conditioning unit for the Cato Kalen back house, and then went into the house through the front door. Why not go in through the back door? Because Kato Kalen would have heard him. So he went in through the front door. Limousine driver didn't see him going through the front door. And if your house is like mine, there is a porch light. And I promise you, O.J. Simpson's porch light was on. Because what did the limousine driver say? O.J. came and said, hey, I'll be out in a minute. Had to take a shower. I was asleep. Ladies and gentlemen, he's getting ready to take a trip. Why wouldn't he be asleep? How many of you have taken a long trip and went to sleep before you had to get on the super, stupid, uh, what do you call it, stupid airplane? Because I know I've done that many a time. Why? Because it's called getting your rest. Because taking a plane, you don't get any rest on a plane. You can't sleep comfortably on nobody's stupid plane. Y'all all know that. And so if you are a frequent flyer, you will take a so-called nap before you get on that stupid plane because you know you're going to be disturbed by somebody. And that's OJ. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, they drove the blood back to the scene. The next thing you know, they used as their primary evidence blood drop from the scene. Blood drop. That evidence was supposed to have been labeled mis inadmissible by the court. And Aido, that idiot, didn't do that. The moment they documented that they drove the blood, oh, I'm sorry, Aido should have done that. He didn't do it, and the defense attorneys, Cochran and his team, would not have allowed them to do it anyway because that would have been evidence of acquittal, which is exactly what he got, an acquittal. Why? Because the jury heard the evidence. The rest of you guys were going off of sentiment. That was a jury of his peers listening to the evidence only, not being bamboozled by no stupid news media. And remember, they were sequestered. They couldn't see all the news. They were sequestered. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, people believed O.J. Simpson was guilty because the news media painted it that way, because the prosecutors painted it that way. Especially in this country, if you are a person of color, you don't have the presumption of innocence. You definitely have a presumption of guilt, but not the presumption of innocence. I do want to mention, I have handled so many cases while on vacation. What you guys don't know is when I'm on vacation, I'm constantly doing nothing but motions for people, literally causing the courts all kind of headaches because they're trying to figure out who is this and how does he know what he knows. And then it takes them a minute to realize I'm there. And what is the one thing they do? Put me in lockdown so that I can't keep helping people. They actually come by and look to see if I'm helping people. They come by and listen to see who I'm talking to, documenting who I'm talking to, putting it in their logs. I know this because I've had lieutenants tell me that they've been observing these things. Why? Why are they so worried about me? Because they know that I'm there to infect their system. I'm there to implant viruses. Viruses? Yep, that's right. The truth. The truth is like a virus, ladies and gentlemen. The truth is like a virus because it destroys a lie. 
It literally destroys a lie. And so my job is to destroy their lies, which is why I do the videos I do. Pay attention. My videos only contradict their stupidity. I'm going to show you guys something. I want you all to take a look at this. This is probable cause. Oh, no, that's not probable cause. Probable cause is right here. That's that unique identifier loan number page that you guys, I know most of y'all are still not paying attention because most of y'all should be going into court preempting. You should be doing the motion for summary judgment, adding that and the two questions to the motions for summary judgment. Like I said, I will try to add that stuff later. But you should be adding the information from that video about that unique identifier, how your mortgage number cannot change. It is a transaction number. And going into court on the summary judgment, saying that there ain't no controversy. They changed the number. This is not the same loan. They cannot foreclose on this property not using that loan. They will have to foreclose on this property using this loan. And guess what, y'all? Y'all going to love this. And in order for them to foreclose on this property using this loan, they will have to document that they gave a notice of assignment with this loan number on it, which they did not give a notice of assignment with this loan number on it. They gave a notice of assignment with a different loan number on it, which shows a different transaction. What's the transaction they cannot prove that I'm anywhere near associated with? Meaning they don't have a claim. So there is no controversy. I need a summary judgment with prejudice. Just that simple. The information is right there, ladies and gentlemen. The argument is right there. This is the Fourth Amendment, ladies and gentlemen. The Fourth Amendment of the Bill of Rights. The right of the people, pay attention to the phrase, the people. Supreme Court has held that the people means the common community. Let's see if we can pull that up. Y'all don't mind? Y'all don't mind? Well, well, let's do that. We'll, we'll open this one. I don't even know if it's still got life on it because, you know, for my 14 days should be up. I'm kidding. Thomas versus State. I don't know that case. Could I have you guys hold for a second? Thank you. Now, just so that there's a clear understanding, we are referring to where the Constitution mentions the right of the people. Everybody keeps trying to define what the people means. So the Supreme Court has, in several cases, and I don't know if it's Grisham, but it is one of those cases that uh, Thomas Clark Nelson introduced, and I went and looked up the case, and it actually, the Supreme Court speaks about it as the common community. So in the plain and ordinary meaning of the term community, it can refer either to a group of people or a locality. So let's see if it ever could mean the people. Okay, y'all don't mind? I don't mind. Okay, the plain and ordinary meaning of the term community can refer either to a group of people or a locality. One more again. Because the word public is not statutorily defined, the trial court looks to the various dictionary definitions stating that public means the community or the people as a whole. A group of people sharing a common interest. The American Heritage Dictionary. The whole body public, or the aggregate of the citizens of the state, nationality, or municipality. Indeed, while the word community can refer to an area in which a well-defined group of people live, it can also, or the word also refers to a group of people themselves, the common community. Okay? Just so that you get it, common community is, hold on, let me see. I think I did put common community here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to quotation this one. Makes it a whole lot easier. Shorey is going to quotation it. Mama, he's quotationing things. Oh, son, just leave him alone. You know, he don't know no better. My mama say you don't know no better. You tell your mama to shut up and go, go ahead. Man, you better leave me alone. before. See, that woman don't deserve to be talked to like that. So you better leave me alone. Before I tell her who she really is, I apologize. I don't know why he keep bringing his mama into this. Okay. Uh, crackhead. Anyway, uh, let's do community first bank. 
to definitely utilize and compromise a common community is not unreasonable. What's the definition? A common bond involved. Well, I'm looking for the people as a group. Uh Uh-oh. In in misery, a public nuisance is any unreasonable inference on the common community. Rights such as public health, safety, peace, morals, convenience. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm waiting for UPS, and I think this might be them. Yep, that's them. I don't know how I know their vehicle. Give me a second, y'all. Be right back. So, ladies and gentlemen, sorry, that was UPS. Just as I said, stop it. Go home. Sorry, the two dogs. Home. Sorry, I sent them to their room. Um, yes, 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 they they are obedient. They listen. Um, just the uh, reinforcement days. Because there's no need to give them a different thing to do every single day. Uh, just repeated command, repeated command, repeated command, so that they understand. It didn't take them long to understand what home meant. But as we said, Supreme Court has documented that the people, when it says the people are sovereign, it's referring to the common community of people. Now, what's a common community? Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's a segment of the community. You don't have to have everybody. You don't have to have a majority. You just to have you just have to have at least ten of you. If you want to bring forth, pay attention. Did you see the case that I showed you guys where the individuals listed themselves and then they said other similarly situated or like situated individuals? That's how you bring in the common community. Q Tam lawsuits is how you bring in the common community. Um, what is it? Uh, what do you call that? Uh, private attorney generals. It's how you bring in the common community because each one of those has to be representative of a segment of the population, i.e. the common community. That's how you represent the people, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'm getting ready to do, because that's what this video is all about, is there's a county in Los Angeles, I mean in in California, and it's called the Monterey County. Um, Let's do that right now since I'm talking about Monterey. So that you guys will see this is a Northern California place. Northern California. Now remember, if you guys thought slavery wasn't in California, you were wrong. If you thought racism wasn't in California, you were wrong. So let's do SEL Salinas C A L I F. Put the whole name as opposed to abbreviation. C O V Sorry. No, it was right. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a county known as Salinas. If you've never heard of Salinas, Salinas is up near a place called Pebble Beach. Um, There is Monterey Cove, Monterey County, uh, Salinas. I was helping somebody with a property in Salinas, and we were doing a land patent. And before I I knew it was going to, I like that part right there, still on the book. And that's NPR, National Public Radio. Now, it didn't do Salinas, but I just need you guys to know that in California, some of these covenants still exist. Okay? And I love this right here. (laughs) I love that. Now, see, but they're they're doing it for Jews and Hispanics and uh, individuals who are Japanese or Chinese or 
other Asian countries. Monterey County Weekly. Pacific Grove looks to erase hate language from property dock. Interesting. Aw, the old laws are still in effect. Reverend Richard Nance would not be allowed to own a home in Pacific Grove, nor would PG attorney David blah, blah, blah. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what I need. Because let me explain to you guys what happened in Monterey County so that you guys get an understanding. In Monterey County, ladies and gentlemen, not only did I, and this is the same, this is not the address of the court, but this is right down the street from the court. Okay, but in Monterey County, Salinas, I was helping someone with the home. I was living in the home. I told the person that I'm going to do the stop foreclosure as a party living in a home and challenge the foreclosure. So I will do the foreclosure. You don't have to. Because I'm staying here, I can do the foreclosure. The district court, when we did the notice to remove, said that I did not live there. And they kicked it back down to the state court who ignored it, who denied me my right to trial. And they took the home. $1.4 million was this home. It had been in that family for 30 years. Ladies and gentlemen, we were trying to do a land patent on the house while all of this was going on. And so we go into the building and I tell the woman, who is uh, Italian, and she's not African-American Italian or African-Italian. She is Italian. And we go into the building, and I told her the moment we go in here, I said, I promise you, they're going to look at me and everything will change. I got to take this as the tax lady. So one second, y'all. I apologize. What I'm going to do is I'm going to explain to you guys real quickly what happened. When we walked into the office, I told her, I said, the moment they take a look at me, everything will change. I said, that's why I wanted to mail it in because when we mailed it in. They said, hey, you didn't send enough funds. We changed our pricing as of January 1st. So... You sent this to us, and you sent it before January 1st, but we didn't get it until after January 1st, so you got to pay the difference. And I told her, the only thing I have to do is pay the fees, and they'll file it. I said, I can just mail it in. She said, well, it's right there. We can just, I can take you down there. And I said, uh, okay. So we went down there, got our car, went into the building, and I looked, and I did not see any flavor. There was no pepper, just a lot of salt and some brown rice, but that was it. You know, and then they had some Chinese rice. But that was it. Didn't have no salt. I mean, no no pepper. Just salt, brown rice, and Asian rice. That's it. And sure enough, ladies and gentlemen, because of my senior gravis, I have a wandering eye. Wandering eye is not a result of a birth defect. Wandering eye is the result of a genetic disease. And which is why they couldn't complete the operation even if they wanted to, because it would not have solved any problems. But anyway, we go in there, and I see out the corner of my eye, which they can't see that I'm looking at them, but they're pointing at us as we walk in. You have this black man with a white woman walking in, and they're pointing and whispering. I could see them behind the glass, and I said they're already pointing at us when we walked in. I said, the two women, you'll see them in a second, the two women standing off to the side, off to our right as we make this turn. See them straight ahead? That's them. They're already talking about us. You know what they told me to do? Oh, well, you need to, we'll, we'll file these, but you need to place the, uh, this information from the Bureau of Land Management, you need to place that on top of everything and then place everything underneath it. I said, no, but you will file it in the order I gave it to you. This document from the Bureau of Land Management goes underneath everything, not on top of everything. It's an attachment. These items are not an attachment to it. This is an attachment to, oh. I told her when they walked away, I said, what they want me to do is they want me to attach those documents to the bottom of the BLM. What they don't know is I've already seen the case law where the courts have called it an alteration of the document when you add to the document in such a fashion. 
and they've been putting people in jail for such alterations. I said, this is the game that they play. Ladies and gentlemen, do you know that these idiots, when they brought their little so-called fake charge against me, originally the charge was altering official government documents? Literally. That was the very first charge they bought because they're supposed to be smarter than I am. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I didn't just start doing this yesterday. As my friend Larry would say, I, I, I don't just look like this. Okay. Um, ladies and gentlemen, well, no, he, he would say, I don't, no, he, he would say, I just look like this, you know, that that's what his response was because you know people took him for stupid because he was a basketball player six foot eight and so people took him for stupid you know dumb jock and so he says i just look like this letting people know that he wasn't stupid he graduated from college and so on and so forth so he wasn't a fool and he wouldn't have been allowed to be around me if he didn't have some sense of intelligence it's just he took business management and i got on him several times and said you can't take business management as a major He's like, why? I said, because business changes too much. Every six months, it's new. So you cannot take that as a major because you will never accomplish anything. It changes, it fluctuates. He learned his lesson too long, too little, too late. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I brought a discrimination complaint against him. When I brought my discrimination complaint against them because they were denying us access, but I showed them proof where they were letting other people file the same type of documents, they were letting other people file land patents on the record and UCC. So I told them, we're just doing the exact same thing that you already said. Here are copies. I even paid $100 to get copies of several other documents that had already been filed. They said, nope, we're not filing it. So I told them I was going to file a different discrimination complaint. I went upstairs, filed my complaint. They denied my complaint. Hold on. If the old laws were still in effect, and they are, you don't believe me? Didn't we just talk about those old laws that are still in effect that discriminate against people? That's what this whole section was about. That's why I went here. If the old laws were still in effect, okay, ladies and gentlemen, Shocking racial language found in Bay Area property docs. Look, now such rules are prohibited by federal and state fair housing laws, racially restrictive covenants. Ladies and gentlemen, the property I was in, the actual covenant for that property literally said that they could not sell the property to somebody of color. And there I am living there. Oops. And I don't know who wrote this junk right here. California has existed prior to the 1890s. I believe the Constitution is 1849. Morons. And often manifest property deeds. 15 million people. Salinas, California real estate. This is somebody trying to sell. That's not... Uh, and that's because the person didn't doesn't know California history. They're just talking. Okay, that's why you can't believe everything you read. Ladies and gentlemen, the only reason why I'm pulling this up, because I wasn't pulling a race card when I filed my discrimination complaint. I know it when I see it, because I've been living with it all my life. See, the problem is, in this era in which we live, with the George Floyd that nobody's talking about anymore, you cannot get away from racism. Now, here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen, many of the politicians owned slaves. Many of the politicians condoned slaves. The United States as a country condoned slaves, which is a violation of the Constitution, not the 13th Amendment. Uh-uh, it's a violation of the First Amendment. See, the First Amendment doesn't say anything about being born in the United States. It says the people, the common community. The community does not have to be U.S. citizens. It means a group of the people. Nothing in the Constitution says you have to be a United States citizen in order to avail yourselves of the rights of the United States Constitution. Go ahead, take a look. First Amendment. 
nothing in there about anything talking about citizens, except when you get to the Ninth and Tenth Amendments, and it talks about the citizens of states. No, as a matter of fact, no, it talks about the people. Interesting. Citizens don't come in until the 11th Amendment. Ain't that something, huh? Because 10th and 11th talks about retained by the people and for the people, uh, retained and reserved is the 9th and 10th Amendment. So there is no citizen. The word citizen doesn't appear in the Bill of Rights. They didn't start using the word citizen until Cain came along. I mean, I'm Citizen Kane. Anyway, they didn't start using the word citizen until much later. Citizen doesn't come in until the 12th, I mean, the 11th Amendment. Citizens of one state against citizens of another state. That's the only time citizen comes in. Yeah, 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 this is what I do, okay? I do this. I do this. Anyway, then you have the 14th Amendment where it says citizen. But the word citizen is not used in the Constitution, ladies and gentlemen. The Constitution is the Bill of Rights. Well, anyway, I'm getting ready to bring my racial discrimination complaint against the board. I've already got the arbitration agreement. I'm about to let them know about the arbitration agreement. They already know because I've already sent them a copy. State of California. I brought it against the state of California. I'm about to report to the governor because I filed some complaints with the governor's office and the governor. Governor? Governor? Governor's office did not respond back. They said they would, but they didn't. I'm going to give them until Wednesday. Then I'm going to start letting them know because I'll start putting together my paperwork. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to let you know because I'm about to go lay down. I I'm just I am tired, okay? It's not even 3 o'clock, and I am exhausted. And, yeah, I was up kind of early today, but it's, that's not even a problem. I was up at 4. It's 3 o'clock, and I'm about to go to sleep. You follow me? You feel me? The two dogs are in the restroom. Ever since I sent them in there, they say, they say they don't come back out because they hear my voice. Okay, now if I get up and go towards the door, then they'll come out because that's our routine. When I go and stand by the door, they know it's time to go out. So when I get up and go by the door, they think it's time to go. Um, uh-oh. And because I just said it the way I said it, they think, and I just said time to go, because I said that word, that command word, go, they think that I'm speaking to them. And because I said it three times, that's in sentence, that's so that they will know I'm not speaking. Yeah, here he comes now. What do you want, Mutt? Where's your sister? Where's your sister? She's uh, lurking in the background. She's coming, too. She's the, she's the bad one, ladies and gentlemen. If you saw the two of these, she looks so innocent, but she is the, she is the klepto, and she is the one that causes all the problems. She acts like she's so innocent. Lord have mercy, is she devious? If she had a personality, man, I'd put her on the street corner. Okay, and tell her to bring me my money. Okay, apologize for that. Hey, where are you going? Penny, where are you going? All right, look, let me let you guys go while I go and uh, deal with the two dogs. Like I said, because I used that one phrase, they came out. And, again, it's all about training. So let me go take them outside because that's where they want to go. Y'all take care. We'll be back with another episode of I'm taking them to court. Gotta go.